Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. Today we follow the order of matins found on page 219 in Lutheran Service Book. The hymn is number 459 and 460, Christ is Arisen and Christians to the Paschal Victim. The text is John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. The Reverend Dr. Matthew Harrison is preaching. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She told them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I haven't I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And then at that he said these things to her. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go to my brothers. I often think that the death of Christ is something like a very small and tangential way of experiencing my first parish. I was in bed Saturday night. It was late, probably midnight. Got a call in the middle of the night uh, on the farmhouse where a celebration had been going on. A bunch of uh, high school seniors celebrating their graduation party uh, was interrupted when one of the girls in the class left the party and lost control on the road and slammed into a concrete brick uh, bridge and was killed. And uh, I got up, I got dressed as soon as I could and drove out to the farmhouse and walked in uh, with nothing but the sound of weeping and sobbing. And that lasted lasted pretty much till the sunrise. Absolute confusion, stunned amazement, um, dumbfoundedness, as though it were all surreal. And Mary, no doubt, was in that kind of circumstance here as she went to the garden. Luther preached a wonderful sermon on this text, 1529. She, in her sorrow, thinks that she would be able to take the Lord's body, carry it. Luther says she dispenses with her uh, status as a woman and thinks she could lift up this dead man's body and put it where it ought to be if the gardener had misplaced it. And the reason she thinks this is she's her mind is clouded from simply the situation and love. Mary loved Jesus. She doesn't give a thought to the religious officials at that point. Doesn't give a thought to being a woman, probably not able to move this body very much. And Luther says, in some she sees and hears nothing but Christ alone. If she could only find the dead Christ, she would be satisfied. Now, whoever reads or hears this example, says Luther, ought to take himself by the nose and reach into his bosom and explore his heart to see whether it too is burning with such fervent, ardent love for Christ. 
But we too have great and inexhaustible blessings from God. Mary had been blessed by Jesus. Probably two years worth of Jesus. It's not exactly clear how often she appears in the New Testament. The word Magdalene, or Magdala, appears probably about 12 times. Luther thought that the same Mary who was Lazarus' sister was this Mary. It's often thought that one of the other women who anointed Jesus was this Mary. But the text don't say for sure. But we've been blessed too. The goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior has appeared to us not because of works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. And what kind of blessings do we still receive from him every day? He treats us just as he treated Mary. We read, we preach, we hear his holy word. Jesus is a common guest among us, abides with us daily, just as he talked and spoke with and taught and was with Mary. Yet, says Luther, not one of us loves Jesus like she loved Jesus. Reading of her love in the text should cause us all to be ashamed. Oh, we would have loved Jesus like Mary if we'd have been there. We would have. Sure, says Luther, you'd have loved him about like the Pharisees loved him. She loved his word. If anyone should love him, it is us. We've got the risen Christ. We've got more of his word and more clearly than she had. We're so lazy when it comes to the word, aren't we? So then this example of Mary is set down so that we may see a picture of a fine, beautiful heart that is so filled with Christ that she neither hears nor sees anything because of it. In her sight, everything else is dead and deceased. Only Christ, dead and buried, lives in her heart. When she does not have him, she has nothing. But when she has him, she has everything. Please show me a Christian among us who is disposed this way toward the gospel, who feels that when he does not have the gospel, he has nothing. And conversely, when he does not, does have the gospel, has everything. So it was with St. Paul. Whatever gain I had, I count as nothing compared to knowing Christ. For me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Mary, says Jesus, in that familiar, recognizable voice that she knew so, so well, it's the same body, the same vocal cords, the same Jesus. Don't touch me. Luther says the strange passage Jesus wants to teach her that now, after his resurrection, it won't be just like, as he thought, her brother rising again, Lazarus. It'll be different. He will be ascending to his father. I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Go tell my brothers. Isn't this magnificent? Jesus is the brother of these same guys that all denied him. Peter three times. They all walked away. They all were afraid. They all denied him in word and or deed. And what is his response? Go tell my brothers. You, my friends, are dear brothers and sisters of Jesus. 
And that means His Father is your Father. That means His God is your God. Jesus is your brother. And if Jesus is your brother, you are an heir to all the treasures of heaven. It's all yours. His life on this earth from beginning to end is all yours. His suffering is all yours. His death is all yours. It is finished is all yours. His resurrection is all yours. He declares it so. You are my brothers. He should have said, go tell those miscreants, says Luther, who denied me. Tell them I've got something coming for them. And he should say the same to you and me, but he doesn't. Dan, welcome. You're entering into a unique world, the world of the synodical bureaucrat. A lot of people take offense at that word. I actually invited, invented the word synodocrat many years ago. People don't recognize that as a way of laughing at myself and the strange things that go on in this building. And there are all kinds of challenges to working here. You think you're pretty important, but you get the glory beat out of you right quick. You think you really know something, and you'll go through a phase or two where you think you've got the answers and nobody else does. Oh, and you'll get frustrated having to tell people for the hundred thousandth time about something they should know already. And you'd be so offended that people have no idea what in the world you do, where you are, where you live, or what is the Missouri Synod. And sometimes they're pastors. <laughs> That's precisely undergoing the challenges of the flesh that the Lord melds you into something worth Him using. And the only good that we can possibly be for the congregations of this synod and her pastors and church workers is if we are brought low, like Jesus, who said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. And you are invited into that service. And the Lord will bless you and your whole family through it in ways that you can't imagine. As I see your young family here, I remember my Marky was younger than your youngest ones. No, about the same. And just uh, after I was installed at World Relief 22 years ago in this very chapel, Marky was missing because he had had enough of the move and saying goodbye and hello. And we had these beautiful ornamental pear trees out in the front of the building at the time. And I got word that Marky had climbed up in the pear tree in the front of the building and would not come down. <coughs> I went out there right away and I found my new district president saying, son, come down, son. <laughs> and it got more interesting after that. And it got interesting with blessing. And that's been my joy to see that happen to so many who have come to serve. These are sinners that you'll work with, all of us. We uh, have our own opinions, ideas. Strange personalities, quirks, passive-aggressive behavior, aggressive-aggressive behavior, you name it. I can put a letter on any number of people, like the church relations guy right there. We are sinners. And so this place, too, forgiveness and patience have to reign. And we're honored to be a blessing to one another and also to be a blessing in serving our wonderful congregations and people. And God welcomes you into that service, and so do we. We look forward to it, dear brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org slash chapel. KFUO Radio share is April 27th, 28th, and 29th. This is your opportunity to partner with KFUO Radio to help us proclaim the good news of Christ for you. Your partnership is vital for us to carry on this work. Join us April 27th, 28th, and 29th on KFUO.